Simple question today, which of the wireless game streaming services is best, Virtual Desktop or Oculus Airlink? Let's go find out. Wireless game streaming has revolutionized the way we play our PC VR games. I mean, who wants to be tethered to your PC with a wire when you can get in the identical performance streaming over Wi-Fi? This is why we have seen a massive spike in PC VR use by Quest and Quest 2 users with Facebook or Meta or Oculus or whatever they're calling themselves now, combined to make up 60% of all Steam VR users with Valve and HTC some way behind them at 17% and 13.9% respectively. Wireless game streaming uses the power of your VR ready PC to stream via your router's Wi-Fi where the data is encoded decoded and processed by your Quest 2. So it depends on having a good Wi-Fi connection using Wi-Fi 5, AC or Wi-Fi 6, AX. I own a Valve Index but probably use my Quest more often and when I use my Quest for PC VR it is 100% via wireless game streaming. We'll take a quick look at the differences between the two services then compare them across four different games so make sure you stay tuned to the end for my conclusion. Ready? Let's get into it. Airlink is Oculus's wireless game streaming service and it is free. Open up the Oculus software on your PC, go to settings, beta, then click the Airlink tab. Link your PC to your Quest via Wi-Fi and you're done. It's very simple to use. For the sake of this experiment, I've changed the refresh rate to 90 Hertz and used dynamic bitrate. Virtual Desktop is the creation of Guy Godden and it is a paid for app and costs 15 pound in the UK. To use the wireless game streaming for Quest, you need to buy the version on the Quest storefront. I have done a full virtual desktop setup video here. So go check that out if you want a comprehensive guide on that subject. Virtual Desktop is a feature rich tool which does many more things than just game streaming, but that is what this video is about. So we'll concentrate on that. For the sake of this test, I have left the automatically adjust bitrate checked on the streamer app as recommended by Guy Godin. And in the streamer tab, I have the following settings. Graphics, high. Frame rate, 90. Sliced encoding, on. Synchronous space warp, automatic. Quick word here on not a quick subject to understand. Airlink and Virtual Desktop both use frame rate smoothing techniques which can extrapolate the next frame to be rendered on your headset to stop frame rate stutter if your PC gets overloaded. Airlink's system is called asynchronous space warp and is applied automatically. Virtual Desktop system is called synchronous space warp and you have the option to turn it on, off or leave it on automatic. For this test I've left it on automatic. Virtual Desktop gameplay was captured on Quest headset itself with the performance overlay box ticked while Airlink footage was captured using Oculus Mirror and the Oculus Debug performance overlay. Before I get to my conclusion though I'd just like to thank all my patrons. I love you all truly madly and deeply. Plus if you enjoy the madness that is Mac in VR please smash that like button, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload any new content. Thanks. Conclusion. We'll talk about numbers first and this is what I saw. The latency on virtual desktop was consistently lower than Airlink. However, this may be down to the way virtual desktop measures latency over how Airlink measures latency. Arcade was bang on 28 milliseconds for virtual desktop and 48 milliseconds for Airlink. Population 1 was 28 milliseconds for virtual desktop and 50 milliseconds for Airlink. Walking Dead Saints and Sinners was between 40 and 50 milliseconds on virtual desktop and 59 milliseconds for Airlink, though Airlink seemed to struggle a bit with frequent frame drops. And the daddy of them all, Half-Life Alex, was very consistent with synchronous space warp active and 39 milliseconds latency for virtual desktop and 59 milliseconds for Airlink with the occasional frame rate drop. Now, feel is something that can't be conveyed by numbers, so even though Airlink appeared to have more latency, Playing back to back with virtual desktop, I didn't notice any difference except with Walking Dead on Airlink, which didn't perform particularly well. Virtual desktop is a mature app that has been developed over years. Airlink is a relative newcomer, only becoming available after the Oculus version 28 software update in April 2021. Which do I recommend? My personal preference is virtual desktop. But if you don't want to pay for your game streaming, then use Airlink. It performs well, it's simple to use, and like I said, it's free. Wireless game streaming is a new thing. Remember that 
We didn't even have it two years ago. Think how far we've come in that short space of time. Think of what we'll be able to do in the future. I am so excited about the future of VR and believe me, it's gonna be wireless. Praise be to Guy Godin and to Oculus for doing Airlink because they didn't have to. They could have just left it up to virtual desktop and stepped away. What do you think? Which wireless game streaming app do you prefer? Do you think there is any information in this video that I've missed? You know the drill? Get involved and comment down below. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the other side. The rant. Stupidly, and I don't know why, Airlink will turn off automatically if not in use for 24 hours. So you have to turn it back on nearly every time you want to use Airlink. Why? Just leave it on, please, because it's a bit dumb. But hey-ho, it's a small issue.